So I painted this bust of Jabba a few months ago. I made a whole video about that, and I was really pleased with how this turned out. This was sculpted by Michael White, and when I heard that he not only was making a Jabba, but also a Rancor bust, I decided I had to get that one too. And so I've had this in my collection for a while now, a few months actually, but I haven't quite gotten up the courage or the, uh, I guess, I haven't had the free time, I, you could also say, to devote myself to uh, trying to, to paint this. So I thought I would finally, during the New Year's break that I'm going to have, try and paint the, uh, the Rancor statue. Uh, this one is, actually might even be a little bit lighter than this one, strangely enough, because this is totally hollow, whereas I think Jabba is if not solid, um, at least much thicker. So anyway, uh, this comes as two pieces. There's a base, as you can see, that it slots into. And then this is like that. You can see there's his signature, 2022. So I guess the first step is just gonna be gluing this to the base, and then I'm gonna prime this black, I think, and we'll dig out the airbrush and see if I can do this excellent sculpture justice. So as you can see, I've primed the statue black, and in fact, I went another step, and I decided to try out a Zenithal highlight, which is something that I've used a couple of times. I'm not entirely sure that it is useful or not, depending on kind of, you know, the kind of paint you're using and the approach that you're taking. But essentially you spray it black, then take a gray primer coat and spray it sort of in a 45 degree angle just over the top. And then once that's dry, you spray uh, white just directly from overhead so that it's just coming down like that. And the idea is that you're kind of replicating the way light would fall onto it from above, bringing out the highlights. So you can see that there are places on here where uh, they've sort of already been highlighted just from that. And if the paint that I'm putting on it is translucent enough, it might actually show through the dark and the light might help show, uh, show through, or at a, at a minimum, it'll sort of just act as a, a guide for me to, uh, you know, when I'm putting in my own highlights manually. I don't know. I have tried it a couple of times on smaller projects, and I thought it was maybe useful, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So we'll give it a shot here and see how it goes. But I'm going to be using the airbrush for most of this, and then switching to the regular brushes for details and things of that nature.
And here we have the finished product. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm happy with how it looks. And I'm also happy that it didn't really take very long to complete. This is quite a large statue, relatively speaking. It's especially large compared to the kind of things that I would traditionally paint, you know, starting with little tiny miniatures and things like that. So I was afraid it might take a long time, and it probably would have if I had just used my traditional approach of doing everything by hand with a brush instead of using the airbrush. But uh, with the airbrush, I found that it was super fast. And, you know, I was wondering about that Zenithal highlight technique where we just use three different colors of spray paint and kind of build in the highlights from the beginning before I even start painting. And I don't know for sure how much shows up through this final, uh, you know, in the final paint job, because I did go in and put in uh, manual highlights and also manual shading here, you know, to make it darker. But it did seem to be uh, pretty useful, pretty handy to have those highlights built in. So I think I'll continue to do that. It's not like it's difficult to, to prime something in that way. So uh, I also, on the base, as you can see, I went with a kind of a slate color. I wasn't originally planning to do that. I was going to do sort of a, maybe a granite, lighter color. Uh, but when I primed it black and did the zenithal highlighting, it kind of naturally became almost this color, you know, to begin with on its own. And I was like, well, that's actually pretty nice. So I went ahead and went with that, just doing an, a dry brush over black, basically. And then I did a another wash, a black wash over that just to darken it a little bit, and then I sprayed it with a gloss coat to make it look a little bit glossy, a little bit more like stone, as you might be able to see. And I also did a little bit of a gloss coat on the Rancor itself. It seems like it would help, uh, you know, bring together the color scheme and so forth, and I think there needs to be a little bit of shine on his skin just to make it look not too matte. Now, looking looking closely at the face, here is sort of where all the, the detail is in terms of additional colors and so forth. For the teeth, I just used some brown and then added white to that over a few layers as I sort of got to the tips to, uh, you know, make it look like he's got some well-weathered chompers there. And I think that worked pretty well. And then I also went went in with a, a black wash to bring out some of the, the details. But it was already kind of there from the black in the uh, in the primer coat. So it was actually pretty easy. Just had to accentuate it in a few places. The eyes might be a little controversial. I don't know. Some people are not aware that the original Rancor puppet actually had ball bearings as eyes that were kind of like, they had some shading, blackened shading to them, but they were, they were just, you know, ball bearings. And so I decided to replicate that by making them silver. There's Really no, you know, detail. He doesn't have pupils or anything like that. I prefer it that way. It makes him look scarier, in my opinion. But, you know, you could always try and come up with your alternate version of what the pupils would look like, I suppose. But, I don't know. I think this is the way to go, frankly. And, uh, also, you may be able to tell I put some gloss coat both on the, uh, teeth, on the fangs, to make them look more like they were some sort of ivory, you know teeth-like material, but also around the mouth and nose to make him look like he's drooling a little bit. I went back and forth about trying maybe to have a piece of drool coming down here, and I could still do that if I decide to later on, but it's a little bit difficult to control that. And I'm not entirely sure what material I would use as well. On a previous Rancor statue, I used some epoxy resin, or I guess it was actually just plain five-minute epoxy glue. And it did work, but then I found that over the years it got really yellowed, and it's not totally inappropriate, you know, for <laughs> a rancor to have yellow drool, I suppose, but it wasn't quite what I was going for, so I decided to just avoid that this time and leave it off. Oh, also, uh, the rancor, this rancor, doesn't have an earring, and I debated adding one myself, but... I decided I would just keep it stock, keep it the way the sculptor had envisioned it. So just to recap, here we have Jabba and the Rancor both all painted up and displayed together. I think this looks really nice. I'm really happy both with 
you know, the quality of the sculpts, but also, frankly, how well they turned out with the paint job. It's always nice when things go more or less the way you envisioned. At this point, up until now, I've been displaying uh, Jabba with my Gentle Giant mini busts. I have a lot of Jabba's Palace related Gentle Giant mini busts. They've been great about releasing kind of obscure characters, and I do plan to keep doing that, but I'm going to have to make um, like a separate area underneath, maybe on a lower shelf for the Rancor and a few of, you know, those related busts. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to be displaying this guy, but we'll figure, we'll figure something out. So if you want to get one of these for yourself, I think you, you can still do it if you want to contact Michael White directly. Just be aware that he lives in Croatia, so sending it will be, you know, a little bit of a, a thing. It's a, takes a while and, you know, it's not cheap depending on where you are, I suppose, but um, it can be done. I was a little concerned, you know, that maybe it would get damaged in transit or something, but he was fine. It was well packed, even though the box itself had gotten a little squashed. The statue itself was fine. Uh, Jabba I didn't get directly from Michael. I got from someone else, but, it, you know, it's still his sculpt. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again next time. This video was brought to you by my patrons on Patreon, especially Angelica Brady and Jesper Murtu, and all of these Palace VIPs you see on your screen right now. If you'd like to help support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can do so by checking out the link in the video description.